So, a beta for the highly anticipated, much talked about, new AAA IP from Ubisoft, The Division, came out recently, and I got to play it. So what did I think? And did this beta overall help or hinder The Division? Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. And welcome to my review of the Division Beta. Now keep in mind, everything, literally everything in this video, and everything I talk about, all the details about the game via this beta, are completely subject to change. This is a beta, this is not the final product, and I am sharing with all of you in this review my thoughts, feelings, and opinions on the beta. Not the final game, not the Division, the Division Beta. This is a review of the Division Beta, not the Division, just want to get that out there. Alright, to start this off, let's look at the presentation of the game presented in the Beta. I have to admit, the Division Beta impressed me with its style and wide variety of options, present in both the main menu and when you first start the game. Looking at the main menu here, you can see it's slick, it's high-tech, it's sci-fi, it's smooth. And while, of course, it's nothing original, it has this high-tech, sci-fi, futuristic vibe to it that, I don't know, I just find catchy and appealing. Now, actually going into the setting options of the game, I was honestly very surprised at the hefty amount of different options and settings at your disposal and are completely customizable. From audio to graphics to gameplay, there are so many options available, especially when it comes to graphics. It really looks and feels like Ubisoft did not half-ass the PC version of the game. If anything, the PC version of The Division seems like the primary go-to version of The Division. I mean, just look at all these graphics options! I have to say, I am very impressed with all the settings available to you. I also like how the main menu is focused on showing you your current character with all their gear, what you customize them with, what level they're at, and as you guys can see, dun dun dun, via the beta it has been confirmed you can make multiple characters, thank god. So the very beginning of the Division beta, the opening, the main menu, hell, even the loading screens, it's all very stylish, it's something I can get behind, I'm digging the art style, the style, just the overall design and structure of the thing so far. Very strong opening impressions. Now before we look at actual content available in the beta and the gameplay itself presented in the beta, there is one more thing concerning presentation that we have to talk about. Now I'm sure I talked about the options in the settings and the main menu and the style and all that other fluff stuff. However, let's talk about the overall graphical fidelity and graphical presentation of the Division beta, which I'm hoping is a solid representation of the full game because... Damn! The Division is a good-looking game and highly customizable depending on your preference, machine performance, and so on and so forth. I mean, you guys saw all the options available in the settings. But when in the actual game, with everything turned on the max, I had everything at max settings, The Division looks absolutely stunning. It is a gorgeous game. I know there's been some controversy surrounding The Division and the downgrade of graphics, but you know what? Even if there is and was a downgrade, the Division still looks pretty damn good, especially when it comes to its environments. The dynamic lighting and night and day system, which can at times completely change the look and feel and mood of an environment. And the environments themselves are just so jam-packed with details, little props and items. Now the game setting is set in New York City near Christmas time, so it's winter, there's snow everywhere, and the placement of the snow on buildings, on props, on the environment in general. Now I've been to New York City during the winter, and if I'm being totally honest, New York City is an important place to me. It's a place I love to go vacation in. It's a city full of life and history, and I've played quite a few video games that take place in New York City. But none of the previous games that I have played that took place in New York City actually made me feel like I was visiting the city again. Sure, I recognized landmarks and certain buildings and went, oh yeah, I remember that when I was in the city. The Division? 
for the most part, is a very, very faithful recreation of New York. The size of the streets, the sidewalks where vehicles were placed, the height of buildings, all the intricate details, and again, the placement of snow. I know I'm really going off and really deeply looking at the environment of this game, but I have to say, the environments in The Division were very impressive to me. Very impressive, especially on max settings, with that wonderful dynamic lighting. The, the Division has a wonderful lighting system. During one of the single-player missions, which I will get to when I talk about gameplay and content in this review, I had to visit these sewers and subways and underground areas. And the dynamic lighting in those areas, the way they contrast with other bright lights, colored lights, and dark shadows, the way it all contrasts and reflected and mixed together, it made for a very beautiful looking, yet foreboding and even in some ways intimidating and haunting environment. Now the graphics aren't entirely perfect, while the environments look fantastic, the lighting is great, there is a huge amount of detail, and a great deal of props and items. I will admit that on many character models, especially side characters like unimportant characters, certain NPCs, particularly civilians, there are some muddy, low-res textures here and there, which is disappointing, because the textures on enemies and character models are, for the most part, very good. They're not absolutely mind-blowing super detailed, but there is a hefty amount of detail, especially on the clothing. And certain main characters within the story campaign are very heavily detailed, with their face, skin, clothing textures. However, it is obvious to a point that some character models got more special treatment than others. So when it comes to certain textures, it is hit and miss. Now to finish up on graphics, because I know you guys want to get to the meat of any video game, because let's admit, anyone that solely focuses and obsesses over the graphics of video games are missing the point of video games, but that doesn't mean we can't admire good graphics all the same. However, last point I want to make, fire. Fire in The Division looks friggin' awesome. Whether it be explosions, or flamethrowers, or just fire littering the environment, fire looks awesome awesome in this game. The fire effects are superb. So that's graphics as presented in the Division Beta. Overall, the environment, details in the environment, certain special effects, the lighting, the lighting is really good, are all superb. Textures are a bit hit and miss. It is disappointing that obviously some models and characters, their textures get more detail, more emphasis, while others look like muddy and sort of unfinished in some cases. But again, this is just a beta and a majority of the textures are up to par. Now, moving on to the more important factors of any game, and the most important factor of this beta, to give us an idea of what to expect when the full game comes out. Content and gameplay. Let's start with content. The Division beta featured a portion of the open world environment of New York. Essentially, two areas in the PvE zone and two areas in the PvP zone. When it comes to PvE, you are immediately dropped into a hub world, given a quick tutorial on how the Division works, how to hook up with other players, buying gear, leveling up, accepting quests, yada yada yada. In the portion of the open world available to you in the beta, you will come across civilians, some of which are interactable, and if you give them a certain item from your inventory, they will grant you XP and some sort of loot drop, as well as random enemies littering the streets. There are also a variety of side missions that host a variety of objectives, from saving hostages to taking out an enemy stronghold, to repairing antennas, to assassinating a mini-boss type character. There is also your primary hub or base, which, as you complete story missions and side missions, will grow and grow, granting you new options, new vendors, and new ways to upgrade your character. However, this was very limited in the beta, but gave us many previews to what will be available in the full game. There is a shockingly huge amount of vendors whom you can buy weapons, armor, weapon mods, equipment, and other such things from. There are also two full-fledged story missions. In both of these story missions, you are rescuing a vital main character who is required to help you upgrade your character and upgrade your base from a particular enemy faction. There were only two enemy factions available to encounter in the beta, the Rioters and the Cleaners. The Cleaners who I especially enjoyed fighting. Now, the story missions themselves were really structured, like how a linear shooter campaign game would play out, which was something I was very happily surprised by. And both story missions were completely replayable, with one of the story missions giving you the option to replay the mission on a harder difficulty. Now, moving on to PvP content, the PvP area known as the Dark Zone, which has already become 
infamous amongst the gaming community. It is essentially a sectioned off area of New York City in which you will encounter other players of the game roaming around this area with you. In the Dark Zone is where you can find the most high level loot and gear. As stated previously, there are only two areas available in the Dark Zone, six being available in the full game. In the Dark Zone, there are a number of extraction points, landmarks, and contaminated areas sprinkled throughout the Dark Zone. Landmarks and contaminated areas is where you will find the loot via chests or killing high-level NPCs. Extraction points are where you go to extract said loot collected from said chests and high-level NPCs. And to round up all this content is a variety of loot and customization of your character. There is a ton of different armors and clothing that you can use to personalize your division agent, as well as improve stats. And finally, there is just a huge variety of weapons at your disposal. A variety of sniper rifles, shotguns, pistols, SMGs, LMGs, assault rifles, a lot of assault rifles in this game. I am surprised at just how many weapons we were allowed to use in the beta. So that's all the content that was in the beta, and quite frankly, I am surprised how much content we were allowed to interact with in this beta. We were given a pretty hefty portion of the open world to explore. We were given a decent helping of side missions, two whole story missions, a taste and a preview of all the upgrades and customization to come. I think this beta for The Division was not only well to stress test servers, of course, to make sure the game is functioning properly, but this was also, in a sense, a demo, a tasting, a free sampling of what's to come in The Division. And quite frankly, in my personal opinion, it succeeded tenfold because I want more content. I want to experience the content. I could see, I want to explore the whole map. I want to unlock all the upgrades. I want to play more story missions. I want to go into the deeper levels of the Dark Zone. This beta had just enough content in it to be satisfying as almost a game in itself and left me wanting more. Now lastly, and most important, the gameplay. How was the gameplay in the Division beta? Now I know certain individuals have had access, early access, to the Division and have had uh, a chance to experience the gameplay and how it's changed over the course of the year. They've had closed betas, alpha tests, all this other stuff, and people have been able to get a taste, a hinkering, of how the Division plays. And this was my first time, my first experience with the Division. Now the Division is a third-person shooter RPG, and the gameplay, movement, and controls are very similar, very familiar to that of your typical third-person shooter. Walking, running, sprinting, taking cover, vaulting over cover, there is surprisingly a lack of a crouch button. Of course, no jump button. This is uh, typical for a lot of third-person cover-based shooters. You can hold three weapons at a time, a primary, a secondary, and a sidearm. You have a very basic melee attack, and your typical aiming, shooting, blind firing over cover. If all of this sounds exactly like another third-person shooter you've played, well, that's because it is. I will be the first to say that the basic controls and gameplay, the basics, mind you, the basics are that of your typical third-person shooter. Nothing original. So if you were expecting mind-blowing revolutionary gameplay, I don't- why would you expect that to begin with? That's very silly. However, if you like third-person shooters, the Division's controls and basic gameplay are very responsive very smooth. I never once felt like I was fighting the controls. There were a few times where I accidentally did a combat roll instead of taking cover because the combat roll and the taking cover are attached to the same button, which can be irritating, but once you get the timing down, it's manageable. However, where the Division's gameplay separates from other third-person shooters of its ilk in terms of control schemes and stuff like that, are the RPG elements and special abilities. Now, even though this is a military shooter set in a modern setting, so you're fighting human enemies, not robots, not aliens, not monsters, not anything like that. However, unlike your typical military shooter, since this is an RPG, enemies have health bars and stats and levels. And enemies that are a higher level than you deal more damage and can take a lot more damage. Now let's address this very quickly, the so-called bullet sponginess of enemies which has gotten people riled up about the division next to the whole graphics controversy. I have to say, the original closed beta, when I saw gameplay for the original closed beta, not this open beta, enemies were bullet spongy. You could tell it took a lot of gunfire no matter your level to take down even the simplest goon. 
Ubisoft has addressed that in this new beta, which gives me hope for the full game because it really looks like they listened to the players. Like, enemies take too much damage no matter your level, they're too bullet spongy, it's very frustrating. And for this open beta, enemies are no longer nearly as bullet spongy. They actually have a pretty moderate and satisfying amount of health. Even the higher level enemies, they're not so ridiculously bullet spongy that it's going to take you five minutes to take down one enemy. Higher level enemies felt like they had just the right amount of health. They had the right amount of health to make them feel like they were a challenge, that I was under leveled. But still, if I was tactical, took cover, gave it all my firepower, I could take down the enemy. Similar to, like, say, enemies from RPG-like games like Borderlands or Warframe. And since this isn't your typical realistic military shooter where enemies go down in just a couple bullets, since enemies have actual health bars and can sustain fire, take some damage, you have to use tactics and strategy. You have to switch from cover to cover. You've got to look for openings. You've got to manage your health items. And what I've been waiting to get to, and what is, in my opinion, the star of the show when it, when it comes to the gameplay of The Division, the special abilities. Now, we didn't get access to all the special abilities in the beta, but we did get access to a partial amount and a preview, a full preview, at all the future special abilities and talents and perks, which are basically your familiar skills in other RPGs for customizing and leveling up your character. But we didn't get access to those. We got access to a small portion of the abilities available, but a huge preview at what's to come. We got access to a scan pulse, a grenade launcher, a shield, a heal burst, and a turret. And these abilities really do add so much more to the typical third person gameplay because they add for tactics and strategy and allow you to engage enemies in a variety of ways. You can take the shield and engage enemies even though they have superior cover and firepower. You can use the scan pulse to know exactly where enemies are and hopefully get the drop on them. You can use the heal burst to basically act as like a secondary medkit, secondary way of healing yourself with the medkits. You can use the grenade launcher in tangent with your own separate throwable grenades to deal some extra damage and take out groups of enemies. And then we have my absolute favorite, the turret. The turret which is handy for any situation, for distracting enemies, for helping you deal extra damage, for providing you covering fire. And in this beta, it was previewed that all the new abilities that come after these and the different modifications, because each of these abilities in the full game will be able to be modded so that they do different variations on what they already do. Like having your turret become a flamethrower turret, or have your grenade launcher fire a flashbang grenade, and so many other modifications for all the other abilities available and that are gonna be available in the full game. I'm not gonna lie, I'm super excited about all these different abilities that you can customize your division agent with, and the best part, you can swap them out on the fly. You are not forced to take one set of abilities over another, you can take any abilities you want and switch them out anytime you want, even in the middle of combat. And to top it all off, the environments are built in such a way where cover plays such a pivotal role in this game. It is a third-person cover-based shooter, and cover is always going to be an important role in all those games. However, I felt more so in The Division. You choosing where you take cover, your enemies choosing where they take cover, you deciding what cover to move back and forth to, perhaps, where you'll use your special ability, how you'll use it, when you'll use it, your enemies, which surprisingly flank you often. They flank. The AI in the division is pretty decent and tactical, forcing you to change up your tactics and strategy, being more aggressive, more defensive. Combine that with cover, your abilities, equipment, statistics, what weapon you brought with you. It's just everything about the division's gameplay and combat flows together so well to create intense and dynamic combat situations. Top that off with the satisfying gunplay. Guns feel good in the game. Assault rifles are solid. Sniper rifles are surprisingly really good. LMGs have real weight to them. Pistols are a handy sidearm. However, my only complaint about a certain weapon type is the shotguns. I think the shotguns need just a bit more impact. I mean, the shotguns feel decent, don't get me wrong, but I've played other shooters and I've played other Ubisoft games where the shotguns had a lot more kick to them. But that's just my personal preference and opinion. Now, what are my overall feelings and impressions of the Division beta and of the upcoming full game? Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys here. The Division didn't interest me at all. When I first saw it, when I first saw gameplay of it, when I saw the trailers and all that jazz, I, like, I had no interest. I had zero interest. I went, oh, it's a 
Third person open world multiplayer game. Okay. I, I don't really care. I didn't get what the big deal was. I didn't understand the hype or the excitement for this game. I just didn't get it why people were drooling over this game when it was first revealed. I, I just didn't get it. But now that I finally played the game, seen the game, felt the game, got a taste of the game, I have to admit, any disinterest, any worries have been totally wiped away by the beta. Completely wiped away. I am now highly anticipating The Division. This happens to me all the time with Ubisoft games, with Watch Dogs, with Rainbow Six Siege. Ubisoft makes games with premises and settings that don't interest me, but once I play the games, I fall in love with them. And that's what's happened here with the Division Beta. I found myself addicted and craving more. I want to explore all of New York City. I want to fight all of the enemy factions. I want to level up. I want to unlock all the abilities. I want to get loot. I want to build and customize my character. Obtain awesome high-level weapons and customize them with high-level mods. I want to see all the cutscenes. I want to know more about the world of The Division and the story. I want to play all the single-player missions and then replay them. I even want to play the PvP. And you guys know, I've said this over and over again, and you guys know, I prefer single-player over multiplayer, but I actually want to play the PvP of The Division. The Dark Zone is addicting, since that's where the high level loot is, and that's where some of the most craziest stuff can happen with other players. Players that will help you out in a tough situation, betray you, take your loot, and you try to do the same to others. It's so unique and different and fascinating, this multiplayer available in The Division, and the single player portion is also addicting. What with exploring the open world, fighting the different enemies, leveling up, like, the Division beta has given me a craving, a craving to play this game. I played over 16 hours, over 16 hours of the beta. How many hours do you think I'll put into the full game when the entire open world map is revealed, when all the single player missions and all of the dark zone is available? The Division to me seems like a solid third person shooter, a solid open world game, a solid MMO, and a solid RPG. And I admit, I'm a sucker for games that have loot in them, high level loot. Collectible RPG loot, I admit it's a weakness of mine, I really like that in games. It gives you a real sense of empowerment and accomplishment, and I felt that in The Division. I felt myself, my player, my character getting stronger. Being able to compete with other players in the Dark Zone. Being able to take on the high-level enemies like they were low-level enemies. So, yeah, the Division Beta did its job. It stress tested the game, it gave me a taste of the game, and it made me want more. And now I'm going to buy the Division when it comes out. Is the Division going to be a game that's for everyone? No, not at all. The premise and setting, the whole military shooter aspect, I can guarantee is going to turn some people off. The whole controversies going on with Ubisoft is going to turn people off. And some people just aren't up to and don't like grinding in games, grinding in RPGs. I don't mind grinding as long as there's a substantial reward from it, but I understand not everybody sees it that way. However, in my personal opinion, if you like third-person shooters, if you like RPGs, and you like open-world games with a bit of MMO tucked in there, I think you'll really enjoy The Division. But again, that's just my opinion, please form your own, learn what you can about the game, see if it's for you. I've played the Division Beta, and it looks like it's going to be a game that's absolutely for me. And those were my thoughts, feelings, and opinions on the Division Beta. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did indeed like the video in any way, shape, or form, please hit the like button. Hitting the like button helps you, helps me, helps you remember all the video. If you hit the like button, please leave a comment. Did you play the Division Beta? What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on this video and the Division Beta as a whole in your opinion? Let me know in the comment section below. I love reading comments. I'm getting nearly enough comments. Please leave a comment. And finally, I am the Gamertron. I love video games. I love talking about video games. If something interests you, maybe consider supporting my channel by subscribing to me. Anyways, guys, this has been a video, and I will see you guys later.